Hey, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast with me, Rob Kosberg. Every week, I interview thought leaders and experts who have used the book to grow their income and their impact. So tune in weekly for these interviews so you can learn how to use your own best-selling book and go from hunting for clients and opportunities to instead being the hunted. All right. Hey, welcome, everybody. Rob Kosberg here. Excited to bring you a friend and a great guest to our Publish Pro Profit podcast today. It is uh, Pete Alexander, uh, affectionately known as Professor Pete. And so uh, great to have him here today. Professor Pete is the best-selling author of Lighten Your Day, Fast, Easy, and Effective Stress Release, uh, Stress Relief When Stuff Happens. Uh, it's a it's a uh, family friendly uh, podcast here, Professor Pete, and uh, also the uh, podcast host of Winning at Business and Life. And Professor Pete owns a couple of very very successful businesses. We'll talk more about the uh, stress relief and coaching and and speaking and and that part of uh, your business today. But uh, Pete, great to have you here, and uh, thanks for being on with me today. Well, Rob, thank you so much for having me on the show, and I really appreciate the uh, listeners' time as well. Love it. Love it. So I want to dive into the stress release, uh, stress relief. I keep saying release. Stress relief part because, um, you know, for a lot of people, uh, the last year has been stressful. Uh, (laughs) Right? You got a global pandemic. You know, there's all kinds of financial challenges and difficulties that certainly some industries have had. Uh, I consider myself really, really blessed because uh, our company has just uh, done fantastic. And actually, in some ways, COVID has been a uh, a blessing in disguise for us. But that certainly um, doesn't mean that it was without its stress. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what are some ways that people can get some stress relief when stuff happens in their life. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting that you say that. First, I want to just point out about the whole thing you mentioned about the pandemic. You know, the interesting thing is the World Health Organization calls stress the number one health epidemic of the 21st century, Rob. No kidding. And, you know, yeah, COVID got all the attention for the last year plus, right? But think about this. When we finally get to the point where we're past that, whether that's the next few months, whether it's beginning of next year, whatever it happens to be where we think, okay, that's in our, in our rear view mirror. What is still going to be around? Yeah. It's going to be stress. And what has COVID caused us? As you said, stress. Right. So the key is, is to remember that we are going to be dealing with stress regardless of what challenges come up. And one of the keys that I find that people have to think about is not all stress is negative. So there's positive stress and there's negative stress. Okay. Positive stress uh, typically comes in one particular, or I'm sorry, positive stress is where, you know, if you're doing something that you love, like, you know, it's clear that with bestseller publishing, you do what you love because you, you know, you always bring that passion yeah. to whatever video, whatever po- uh, webinar you do. So it's clear that you have that. And so the positive stress are the things that help us get things done. So if you have deadlines and stuff regarding stuff that you enjoy, that's positive stress and that's not going to uh, negatively affect you. However, the negative stress, comes in two different flavors. It's either rumination, which is worrying about something in the past. Like let's say you're guilty about doing something or not doing something and you let that fester. Well, guess what? It's in the past. You can't do anything about it. Right. It's done. It's done. But if you keep letting that fester, it's just going to gnaw at you and it's a negative stress. The other flavor is thinking about something that you're anxious about in the future that may or may not happen. Right. Right. And the thing that is always amazing to me is that when you worry about something in the future, you're fearful about something in the future and you worry, 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 often you manifest that worry. It turns out negative because you kept thinking about it. And unfortunately, that energy, that negative energy that you send out to the future is going to backfire on you. And so one of the great things that I like to talk about with people is the fact that 
when it comes to anxiety, it's almost all based on fear. And what happens is, is that most of our stress these days is mental. And the crazy thing is most of our mental stress is self-induced. We do it to ourselves, such as being anxious about something in the future. And so instead of being in that stuck state of fear, what I always like to ask people is, what have you, instead of worrying about that fearful thing, ask yourself the following question. What would it look like if I knew I couldn't fail? Mm. What would I look like if I knew I couldn't fail? And think about that from a real positive standpoint, instead of the stuck state of fear over being anxious about, you know, let's say an interview or a difficult conversation or a, let's say, thinking about starting your own business, whatever it happens to be, writing, you're writing your book. It opens up, asking yourself that positive question opens up the world of possibilities. And this works for any age. In fact, uh, you have kids, I have kids. I asked my youngest son when he was 18 and had just graduated high school. And he he went into this whole negative thing about, I don't know what I want to do. And it's like, <laughs> I didn't know what I, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I went to college, right? I don't know about you, but I, sure. I didn't. But he just really got into it. He just says, ah, just, I, I don't know. And I'm I don't have any direction, blah, blah, blah. And so I asked him, I said, what would you do? What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I don't answer that right now. I want you to think about it overnight. And the next day he came back to me. And first he says, you know, dad, that was a really interesting question. And I'm sure, Rob, you could think of this. When a teenager actually says something positive to you, you know, you've hit <laughs> a home run, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, and he came back with three completely off the wall ideas. And that was three years ago. And he is pursuing one of those three right now. No kidding. How cool. So, yeah. And it, and it just took all of that stress off of his shoulders. Yeah. It, and it's just a simple question. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that uh, people don't realize. I know that we're all stressed for time and, you know, time is actually the T and the light and model from the book. Yeah. But what's really interesting is it only takes finding one or two techniques that you can utilize at least on a daily basis, hopefully, but if not, whenever you need. Yeah. And if you do that, the compound benefits over time will be enormous. You just have to start and not say, oh, I don't have one minute or two sure. minutes to try this. You do. What, you know, why, don't we, being, uh, why don't we try something uh, right now? What, you know, what sure. Heck, right? uh, you sure. Know, what's so a, what's say, a one minute exercise that, that we can do or technique to uh, you know, relieve some stress? Oh, absolutely. So, and this can be done anywhere except if you're driving in traffic. Okay. okay? All, right. All right. So, imagine we're so closing when, our eyes if that's the case. <laughs> exactly. So, let's say, let's say that you pull up in front of whatever the building is that if you got an interview or if you've got this important sales call or let's say you're going on a first date with somebody you're nervous about, whatever it happens to be. So, what you do is you close your eyes. So, go ahead and close your eyes. Yep. And I want you to go in your mind to a place you like to relax. Maybe it's the beach. Maybe it's a park. Maybe it's a lake. Maybe it's your backyard. Maybe it's the spa. Wherever it happens to be, go there in your mind and take in all of your senses. So what do you feel? Do you feel the sun on your face, maybe the sand or the grass under your feet. And what do you smell? Do you smell the fresh air? Maybe the lotion from the spa? What do you hear? Do you hear the wind blowing through the trees? Maybe the water splashing on shore? And what do you see? Do you see the blue sky? Maybe the green of the trees or the grass? Whatever it is, take it all in and then take a nice deep breath. And open your eyes. That's great. How'd that do? Well, I wasn't, nice I wasn't coming. stressed before, but I feel great now. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be done anywhere. And it took less than a minute to do yeah. that. 
Yeah. You know, you just, and so you just go to your happy place and what, I, I don't go know if you your happy place. this. There you go. I love that. Exactly. And you know, it, it's interesting because you can do this, whether it's in your car, you could do this at your desk. Um, you can do it wherever, as long as, you know, you have one minute of solitude. And yeah. so it, 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 it just works really easy and you don't have to have a, you know, anything around. And what I always tell people is, Guaranteed, if you um, want to try this, turn off the notifications on your phone for that one minute. Because Murphy's Law, yeah. when you're in your happy Someone's place halfway through it, exactly, or a text, and, and what do we, it's that classic Pavlov's dogs, oh, I got to check that, yeah. and boom, you, do, you just lost it. So Good. tell me, you know, when it comes to your, your book and writing your book, like I know your other businesses uh -huh. and you're, you're very successful, but it's not like you know, your businesses revolve around teaching people about stress relief. Mm -mm. So what was the, the thing that initiated that desire to write that book to, was it your own dealing with your own stresses in business and life? You know, what kind of started you on this journey, if you will? Sure. Well, it actually stress and I have had a almost lifetime uh, relationship <laughs> with each other. Right. Started right. with a love, very hate. dysfunction. <laughs> yeah. Love, hate. I would say very much hate as a child, all the dysfunctional family dynamics. But what it where it really started becoming um, significant for me was in my mid 40s. Uh, it was in 2008 and I had a perfect storm of stressful activities happening. Things like my dad dying uh, and he needed all of his affairs to be taken care of of. I was running the business and I had small kids that needed to be, had their attention. My mom had uh, decided to have major hip surgery and she didn't have the insurance for the follow-up care. Oh, um, and oh, by the way, my, my marriage was heading for a divorce. So just wow. a few things going on. Wow. And what happened was about, let's say 30 days before uh, I was checked, I started losing weight. And I lost 30 pounds in 30 days. Good. And at first, Rob, I'm telling you, a mid forties, I'm thinking, wow, this is great. I am not, I'm not doing any special dieting. <laughs> I'm doing my regular exercise and it's just coming off. I can eat my Oreos, whatever it is. <laughs> and it kept coming off. And I thought, this, you know, after, once that 30th pound came off, I thought, you know, I better get some blood work done and see what's going on. And sure enough, I got diagnosed with stress-induced diabetes. Wow. And the crazy thing is, is that there's not anyone in my family tree who has diabetes other than one cousin. And so there's really no diabetes in the family. And yet what happened was, is I get this diagnosis and I didn't listen to my body about what stress was doing to it. Instead, I did like many of us entrepreneurs do. I kept burning the candle at both ends for another 10 years. And then in 2018, what happened was I ended up in the emergency room with a severe case of diabetic ketoacidosis, wow. which for the listeners who don't know, basically my body was eating itself alive because of my stress. And the doctors told me I was one hour from being comatose. I literally was green. And um, I got transferred from after they stabilized me and I had to take in uh, over six liters of fluid and I didn't never went pee. That's crazy how dehydrated I was. What ended up happening is that they transferred me to ICU for several days. Never been in ICU. I had been in the emergency room, sports related things or kids got, got injured, but I had never been in ICU. And on my second day in ICU, I was uh, actually, I'd gone back to the corporate world and I was working on a very high profile project. And I get this text from my boss at about 6 a.m. And it says, you have a webinar you need to run at eight o'clock. What are you going to do about it? Now, mind you, my boss knew that I was in the ICU and surprise, surprise, I didn't have my work laptop with me. Wow. So there I am sitting there trying to, you know, reschedule this from my phone, my iPhone. And so every half an hour to 45 minutes, they were checking my blood. And when I was admitted to the hospital, my blood sugars were so high that the medical grade uh, glucometers could not read it. All it said was high. They estimated that I was between eight and 10 times higher than I was supposed to be. And so f my numbers had come down into more reasonable settings at that point, still a little bit high, but 
but at least reasonable. And so she goes and she checks my blood and it was like this 90 degree angle. Wow. It just shot up. And she says to me, complete stranger, right? A nurse. She says to me, you realize as she was seeing me doing my phone, that's what puts you in this hospital bed in the first place. That was the epiphany moment. It was like, what am I doing? I am trading my health for my career. Right. And that is a very bad trade. Yeah. So I s did a lot of provoking considerations for that next couple of days that I was in the hospital. And uh, I realized at that point, you know, I had managed my money fine. Um, and I really didn't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And so I, the day after I got out of the hospital, called my boss, resigned. And then I started applying any kind of stress relief tool or technique that I could find. And what I found was that not only did my stress go down as I was applying these tools, my glucose numbers went down, my weight went down, and my energy level went way, way up. It was like I had found the fountain of youth. And here's the crazy thing. If you look at pictures of me from 2008, when I was first diagnosed with stress-induced diabetes, and pictures of me now, I actually look younger, and I haven't done any cosmetic any work. work. No, no, you and I, you and I are from California, right? You know, so no work done, no work. And so I'm not even waking, we're using makeup right now. But the crazy thing is that your body can regenerate itself in many cases. You just got to realize that. And so my former coworkers, friends, family, they said, you ought to write a book. Mm. And so that's what I decided to do. And uh, your company did a great job helping me make that a, a reality. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you. Thank you for that word. And what an incredible story. I mean, uh, you know, you hear about people working themselves to death, but, you know, and the negative impact of stress in people's lives. But it seemed to be to such a critical point in yours that it just became, you know, like life or death, super obvious. It was. So, I'm really glad you wrote the book. Let's change gears uh, for a minute, if we could, and talk a little bit about it. You know, you you wrote the book, like most authors do, with the idea of making an impact on people and and helping people with your knowledge and your wisdom and what it is that that um, you know you almost died to receive, right? Uh -huh. But the book is also written for you. You had your own uh, goals for the book. And so I, I'd like to, to talk for a few minutes. You know, the book's done very, very well, and it's been super well received. What have you gotten from the book? Like, how has the book helped grow your authority, maybe get you opportunities to speak or PR media or uh, to sell and make some money in business? So maybe let, let's mm -hmm. talk for a few minutes about that, Pete, if we could. Sure. Well, it, what it really has done, I mean, and when you have a book that you can just hold up like this, yeah, you know, there is, there, as you say, this level of authority. And to me, what it is, is it's, it's a huge credibility builder. Because when you are an author, and this is not the first book that I, I, I wrote, this is the best book that I've written, but it's not the first one. And what happens is, is people will pay attention to you. And for me, what I wanted to do was after this happened to me, I really thought to myself, I don't, you know, I've been given this opportunity to share about what is dangerous about working yourself almost to death or right. to death in some cases, because, uh, you know, unfortunately, I know people that have ended up in that case. And so I wanted to get the word out. Well, had I just said, oh, you know what, I, I burned out at my job and stuff. Can I talk to your organization or can I come on your podcast and stuff? I would say probably if I tried to do that 95 to 99%, I would get rejected. But the fact that I had an Amazon bestselling book and that I could send a copy of that book if they needed that, that opened doors. And I've been on so many podcasts and other interviews, um, not only in the US, but all over the world. Mm. I've had the opportunity to speak in front of a many, many different organizations, all because that book became a real thing. Yeah. So to me, uh, it, 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 it's been 
for lack of a better way of looking at it, it is a business card on steroids. Yeah. That's what it really is because it just, you know, it and the way having the the process that BSP took me through was so much better than with the way I wrote books before. It was like, you know, I was working with not only an editor, but also a um, uh, somebody that was was reviewing what I was writing. And, you know, you get up blinders on a lot of times as an author, and you think this is what people need to hear. But when you have somebody who is giving you the the opinion that's based on what the market needs that is so powerful yeah. and you know and it really it exceeded my expectations it really did and uh you know each time that i i look at that book and each time that i talk about that book as i mentioned earlier that you have the passion for your company and stuff i really have the passion for that book and i'm it's even though i have a phd dissertation that was published by the university of michigan <laughs> I look at that book as my crowning moment, not that other book. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's really cool, Pete. I, I love that. Love the story. Uh, I'm really glad that I asked you also what initiated you writing the book because I, I didn't know all the details of that. And so, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for your trust in uh, in me and, and BSP and in, uh, in bringing this, you know, this message to life. And uh Obviously, you know, this is something that can help a, a whole lot of people because uh, stress is not going away. You know, in fact, I am afraid to say that I think the coming months and years are going to be far more stressful than COVID was because we're going to be dealing with uh, the financial ramifications. You know, there have been people who haven't been making their rent payments, their mortgage payments, uh, and those, uh -huh. those programs are shutting down and there are going to be foreclosures and, and all kinds of, of challenges that people are facing. So uh, a book like yours, I think, super, super needed. So thanks for being on today. Tell us, where can people get a copy of the book? Where can they learn more about you know what it is you do, your podcast, all those things? Let's give them some links. Sure. Um, they can go and find all of that actually uh, on my website, which is PeteAlexander.com. Uh, the podcast is there. The book is there. Uh, stress ideas are there. So by all means, please uh, visit my website and uh, I'd be happy to uh, engage in with the audience if they'd like to talk to me. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. So uh, yeah. reach out to me on LinkedIn. Love it. Love it. Pete, thank you, my friend. Great to be with you as always. Uh, congratulations on all your success and uh, stay stress free, my friend. Rob, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and the listeners' time as well. I hope it was helpful. Love it. Thank you.